especially if you can do multiple characters on games. Oh uh, yeah, change your voice up and right. do stuff like that. You'd be like the announcer, the movie announcer dude. Coming soon to Fox, <laughs> a new action comedy mm -hmm. starring Damon Wayans, Keenan Ivory Wayans, and the third guy from the left on Living Color. keeping everything going i want to start with this you know continue to subscribe to us y'all we're on apple Podcasts, we're on spotify google Podcasts, iheart radio amazon music and stitcher and where can they find us at youtube right man you can find us on youtube at the prez x tv for That's sure one word t-h-e-p-r-e-z-e-x tv on youtube uh also the prez x uh, presidential executive podcast on instagram on facebook facebook uh twitter we're all over the place oh. and uh so we got a big announcement with that too mm, so like yeah. we are over 900 uh followers on facebook okay, yeah, uh, yeah. we got a hundred uh over a hundred uh followers okay. on our instagram instagram and we got finally got to 100 subscribers on youtube and yep. so again like Y'all, we out the mud with this. Like, we didn't come with no endorsements. We didn't come with no celebrity backing. Right. We didn't come with no celebrity background. Like, we came straight out the mud. So, thanks and salute to all our subscribers, our followers. And we have accumulated 3,000 views. Right. Totally. Not, not for one video, but all our video, we've, we have right. accumulated 3,000 views. Salute! For sure. Yeah, and, so. and like I said, from, from the mud within that, and, I, and I'm not the one, we're not really the one, we don't really... We don't tag people. I tag a lot of people mm -hmm. and our stuff when we bring out videos. Right. You know, I have thought about, you know, this. we don't really tag people and be like, you know, this new episode, I, I just usually tag right. you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, let people kind of organically, you know, uh, come in and, yeah. and, and look at it like that. So, I mean, we're not buying, like, you know, they got those they do. people on Instagram and say, like, hey, we can get you. 10,000 views or 10,000 likes or right like we're not we're not into buying subscribers or we, buying we, followers we none of that right you know now. if you're cool with us you fool with us you know and if you don't you won't but we're gonna be good either way so right. just thank you to everybody who's been supporting liking subscribing sharing yeah man. we in here and we learning as we go man and so this is uh this is good time man this is our you know this is therapeutic time it you is. know what i'm saying really it for is. us, are kind of what we doing, man. So you know, we appreciate everybody that's joining in and and uh, doing that. So um, let's go ahead and get into this rundown. What we got bro. first, man? What man, we got? this you know we talked about this guy before. Uh, good old money bag Joe, oh son, uh, Hunter Biden. Man, Hunter Biden, he uses the N word in text talking to his lawyer. Okay, and it's you know like I, I think I even said it on the um, on the last uh, episode. I was like, you know, this is this is almost like exposure season. I don't. It's like everything kind of just coming to the light, bring you know, kind of coming out. You know what I'm saying? To where yeah. you can't really. You I mean you can still deny you can deny anything if you want you know yeah. people, people deny Jesus even you know whatever but mm -hmm. you know I mean like we can we know that the sky is blue because the process of the water cycle you right know what I'm saying water evaporates and it goes into the clouds that's why the sky is blue <laughs> it's just water that's in the air sure. but you can say that the sky is green you can it doesn't make it green but right. you can say and if enough people tell you it's green like we'll do like chicken little you know everybody will start believing that the sky is falling if enough people say it but i digress continue that, that is true which is so, thought on hb this uh hunter biden here it says this is the first son hunter biden uh repeatedly called his white attorney the n-word in a pair of bizarre and occasionally lewd text conversations late in 2018 and 19. okay and let me see they had a couple stuff in here he and, and like yeah, maybe I put some of this up, but he, 
Like he he was licensing me to read it. He was like, no, I don't know. He, he was he was licensing like he in the Jay Z song like that the nigga what nigga who like he just he just licensing him dog like this is a conversation I think he had with this dude. He was um it says okay this is a conversation he, like he was just saying like this is Hunter Biden talking to his lawyer his right. white lawyer right. So white Hunter Biden is talking to his white lawyer. Right. Okay. Right. He's saying, and one of the responses he was saying, because nigga, you better not be charging me Hennessy rates. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was kind of funny. Yeah, and, it's like you he know, been, he been uh, following Kwame Brown. Right. And you know, and and then his uh, lawyer uh, replies and do all this. Like, it's just a lot of different, you know. I can't get into the context of it because it's just kind of random stuff. But, you know, he was saying, OMG, nigga, did you just fictional, did just a fictional character from the imagination of the collective frightened and my dead brother's unconditional love is what I should rely on my kids? You know, it, it was just, just regular conversation. He using the nigga word a lot, rag, like. Yeah. And so when y'all yeah. didn't get the Kwame Brown reference, you know, while I don't agree with Kwame, I, I do agree that he's funny. He I do funny. agree that he's funny. I do agree that, you know, if you come for him, you better not miss. You know, he does have a, a great... Uh, he's ready. He's he from the South. You know, he know how to snap. So, you know, I, I give him that. <laughs> but that, that's why when I said, you know, he's being charged Hennessy race, I'm like, dang, you been, uh, you know, kicking up with Kwame. You done learn how to tell a good, you know, joke. <laughs> yeah, he's... And, mm. I, and the whole thing, he was, you know, and, and it's... You can look this stuff up. You can Google it yourself. But, you know, he has a lot of stuff in here. He's just saying, you know, his uh, lawyer say something. He'll say something like, okay, true that nigga. <laughs> like, this is like regular talk. Like, he'll say something like, okay, it's so annoying when you so-and-so do that. Then Hunter Biden, he'll respond something like that. Yeah, true that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, the sky is blue or something like that. Uh, you right, nigga. <laughs> like, in a, it's like... <laughs> but what is what is his defense? What has he said in response to this? Um, from from my nothing, I, I I haven't seen anything yet. It may be something out at this moment right now, when this is out. But I haven't um, seen any type of. I mean, it's, I mean, how can you really defend you this can't. though? Uh, but with that being said, so I think that uh, you know I don't want to give you too much editing work, but you need to put two awards down. Two awards. Yeah, oh my gosh. Uh -huh. So the first one, uh, he he gets the uh, our boy, uh, Pleasure P, the real playoff <laughs> P, the Paul Pierce Award for keeping it real goes long. He wins that award, Hunter Biden, for when he's keeping it real goes long. And and, and I'm I'm already giving him a shoe in for whatever his or money bags explanation for it is. They're gonna get it. We have a gift for that, uh, or we have a. a, a, a a meme for that, that that I sent you. The WN? Yeah, he gets the whatever, nigga. The whatever, whatever the explanation is. Yeah. He not only wins. Yeah. The one keeping it real goes around the Pleasure P Award. <laughs> but he also gets the Pinky's Driver. <laughs> you know, award. <laughs> if you remember, yeah, yeah. even yet. Yeah. Yeah. Pinky got out the car and he was like, yeah, I'm gonna, he's like, what? Like, you get the whatever, nigga, award. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah, he he got two awards. And, and, Good job, Hunter. And I and I want to yeah, give him give him a round of applause. We, we, on that. we salute you for your buffoonery. Salute. Give him a round of applause on that. But I, you know, I do want to get into just this whole thing. Like I don't even think they will probably address it. You know what I'm saying? Just because of who it is, and they kind of got a hold of the the big media, like CNN and stuff like that. Like. They're not going to talk about this kind of, you know, yeah, kind of no, in not, depth or, no, you know, because if this was, if these were Trump's kids. Oh, my goodness. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It would be front page. I would have people on social media just black. Oh, I told you it was racist. He can't, you be using this word. But since my thing, and I, and, and, and I never shy away, you know, social media or even on here where I stand. Like I said, I'm more conservative, you know, in my views because I, I you know, that's what I just believe i think that's uh um you know the right way to go with you know how i believe and how my uh faith is set up what they say you know what i'm saying but you know this whole thing like it's you know I, all i want with anything what we even talk about on here is you know what i'm saying call a spade a spade you know what i'm saying if it's a republican on here doing something whack I won't shy away be like, yeah, that was wrong. I don't believe, you know what I'm saying? And so a, a Democrat on the, on, on the same thing. But 
It's this thing, especially with what us. Is, uh, Ted Cruz. He's a Republican. So yeah, wasn't we on him? We, yeah, we yeah, got we, on him a few on him. a few months ago. Yeah, and, and have we not been on Trump? Yeah. Yeah. So we we on every like we. Yeah, and, and that's and that's my thing. I would like just to quote your cousin, everybody, no matter what your race or ethnicity or your gender <laughs> is, they can get a little bit of what? What can they get to quote your country, cousin? What do we give them? They could get some of that mama's cooking, dog. <laughs> we, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we give everybody mama's cooking. They could get some of that mama's cooking. So, and so, and, and that's the disappointing part with me, man. I just, because if this was on the other foot, Roland Martin... It would be, you know, rolling out his TV show and talking about this and saying, oh, y'all see what's going on and doing all this and, you know what I'm saying, oh, rolling more. Who have else? Have you seen that picture with him and I think it's Michelle from Destiny's Child? I did. Uh, I saw, they, I did they, I did they go together for real or something? Nah. Okay, we, I'm sorry. I, I just don't have anything to do with what we're talking about. It's I just somebody well, well, I put can't, up a post about it, the sugar daddy. <laughs> like, with your sugar daddy back <laughs> It's like, if it's real, it I don't want to. I don't want to play a hate. If Roland Martin got like that, but I think uh, Kelly Rowland is married though. No, no, it was Michelle. It's Michelle. What yeah, it was it? Michelle. I think it's Michelle, not Kelly. I think it, I'm almost certain that was Michelle in the picture. Yeah, Cause she looked like, I, I why can't. is this nigga hugging me? But when you said Roland Martin, it made me yeah, think about that. Yeah, I, I can't. And I was like, I ain't mad at you. Nigga. I can't like, vouch. I can't vouch. But like you said, if he got it like that, you know. You know, Kelly is my joint from uh, that, that's my joint from Destiny's Child. Kelly, yeah, she. You know, but but yeah. but Michelle could definitely get the uh, you know what I'm saying? She could definitely get the mystical, you know, <laughs> gift. Uh, get to lick the face of war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. back back to what you were saying though, if the shoe was on the other foot, like Roland yeah. Martin, if, if the, if the shoe was be... on the other foot, man, it would be, you know, front page news and people, at least all of my timeline, you know what I'm saying, will be just hitting them hard. I gotchas, the memes and stuff like that. And so I just, I just want people to to be, you know, keep that same energy. On both sides, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, when when Trump did a lot of stuff, and people were like, oh, what's up with your boy and stuff like that, I'm like, I can't, I can't say nothing. I can't really vouch for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and how he was saying stuff and doing stuff like that. But you know, the heart of the matter, that's a whole totally different issue. But you know, but y'all that that voted for Biden and Harris's ticket, you know what I'm saying? Don't I, don't shy away from this stuff now. Keep that same energy. Post the stuff. You know, right, wave a red flag. You know what I'm saying? That needs to be out there because it's a lot of stuff out there about Hunter Biden that uh, people don't want to talk about. People refuse to talk about. Uh, I'm not even gonna get on the VP uh, Kamala Harris about some stuff, but you know, we just cool with the pearls and chunks. And um, you know, oh my goodness, she's an AKA. Yeah, and keep that same thing. And so, like I said, it's not popular. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be us and do what we do. So, uh, but let me go to this name. And, and you hey, got, you, you, got said, you said something, so I just remember you told go me ahead, to write ahead. it down. No, no, no. You told me to write it down. It's like, you <laughs> said you said something. Okay. And I was like, I ain't going to say it because I don't want nobody to, you know, get it. Because yeah. what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> but I'm sitting over here. I'm like, oh, you're you, you, you going to get, like, you're going to get the text message. Yeah. Because, like, all the stuff I was saying, we need. But you said something, and I was like, oh. And I was gonna say I was like, nah, I ain't gonna do. It. I ain't gonna give. It. I ain't gonna give them that one for free. They're gonna have to pay for that one. You're gonna pay for that one. Oh, they're gonna pay for that one. Okay. But but you said it. Okay. All right. And and I was like, you know what? I like that. Yep. I like that. So yeah. that doesn't. I, I don't know if nobody got it yet. No, I don't know if they got. I don't it, know but, if they got it yet. Yeah, they, but I, I was like, I had I had to instantly like let me go on and it marinate. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's gonna be coming. So mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that, that's what's up with your boy Hunter Biden, man. So uh, two awards for our boy Hunter. You got two awards. Yeah, you, you got, got the, the pleasure P. Pleasure P. And the whatever. And the nigga. pinky driver award. Yeah, for whatever nigga. So mm -hmm. okay, All what right. we got next? Man, this next one uh, in Maine, mm. the state Maine. Not Maine, Maine, like Memphis, you know what I'm saying? Not, you know. But, <laughs> no, if, but, <laughs> if, if you're from Memphis in the state. Right, 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 right. And like, you're spelling the states, and they ask you to spell Maine, like everybody from Memphis is going to fail that spelling bee. It will, yeah. Spell the state of Maine, you know, and then when you're in the spelling bee, that you, you can always say, give me a definition or use it in a sentence. Right. Uh, it is the whatever state of the United States. Oh, psh, I can spell Maine, nigga. <laughs> Maine. <laughs> The M A N E, man, like oh, it's over with. And that's you the thing. Fail. 
Like, and, and a lot of people, I had to get on my boy, uh, Dub, uh, Google it, you mm-hmm. know, one time, Google text him one time, he'll say Maine, but he was spelling it M-A-I-N-E, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah, like, no, that's the state. Yeah, I was like, no, you, you know, just so you won't put it out there, like, you, you, you know you can't be from Memphis and put, and spell that, you know, so I had to school him, like, it's M-A-N-E, you know what I'm saying? But... We talking about the state of Maine, okay? Where M A I N E, the state of Maine is spelled M A I N E. I said the state Maine. The state of the, right. The, the state, state, state Maine, Maine. State Maine, Maine. Maine, the state of Maine, Maine. Maine, Maine, Maine. But it said in in, in Maine, eight vaccinated residents died uh, with COVID nineteen. Um, I think this happened over actually the last you know couple of days, um, so. It sounds just like I said it. Uh, eight people that were fully vaccinated. I mean, you know, they took, you know, whatever doses that they took twice. Uh, those people um, died actually with a vaccine, with them actually being, you know, vaccinated. And, you know, true to speak, when you look at the context of the matter, I believe a few of those people, you know, they were older. You know, I know one guy was... Um, you know, well into his seventies or something like that. You know, which, if you're looking for excuse, be like, ah, oh, his time was whatever anyway. But, you know, I do think that that was you know duly noted. And honestly, I think in a in a few episodes ago at, in in the run, I think we talked about the um, the Golden State basketball player Damian Lee mm-hmm. that he contracted the virus actually after being fully right, vaccinated. Yes, fully vaccinated. And his they was like, okay, this is just, these are just exceptions to the rule this you know these are really rare cases and then we got eight people in maine you know and this is not even this is just eight people i guess they reported and so check this out though so now and i was just looking this up because i didn't know like so it's only 1.3 million people in the entire state of maine Mm. 1.3 mil in in the entire state of maine Mm, okay like we got that many people in memphis yeah we do you know what I'm saying? And and so uh the state of Maine is the twelfth smallest state by area. So mm-hmm. in other words, basically out of the fifty states, there are thirty eight other states larger than Maine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's thirty eight other states larger than Maine, and then it's the uh the ninth least populated state. Mm-hmm. Which means it's forty one other states that are more populated than Maine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's not that many people yeah. in Maine yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And so, and you know, like, lot. like again, that, that is a lot when you're yeah. talking about a state that does not, the entire state, not a city, the entire state only has 1 million, 1.3 million people. Mm-hmm. So in context, like that is a lot, but, mm-hmm. and it says in here, it says breakthrough cases are expected, says the CDC. Uh, has previously stated there may be a small percentage of fully vaccinated people who still get sick and are hospitalized or die from the virus. But again, as we're saying, the way that they're pushing this, you know, to the extent that they're doing, you know, the question like, why are they pushing it to this extent if it's still a a higher, a high possibility or a medium possibility for you to you know, still get the, you know, the vaccine and stuff. And so I didn't mention this even on the last one, you know, President Biden was, um, he he has an initiative that he's about to push that really comes into our communities and really pushing into the, the barber shops and all that. I didn't even, it's not even some, I just remember this actually from last week, I want to mention it, but, you know, it's like a barber shop initiative to where he's going to, you know, infiltrate our communities to really let the people in the barber shops to push vaccinations to get them vaccinated you know what i'm saying in our you know what i'm saying in our community and so i'm just like really like it's you know it, it's under total 11 like i said we're gonna keep on you know beating, oh, beating the dead yeah, horse on this and know. shout out to my cousin uh mike mm-hmm. uh we I, he actually posted it you know on, on his instagram page uh mike rags mm-hmm. on uh okay yeah, uh, yeah. or i want to say just say rag on instagram but uh 
and he has the Rags Rants podcast, you know, uh, out of out of Birmingham, Alabama. So uh, shout out to my cousin, Birmingham um, Papa Do. Yeah, I want to go down there. We need to go down there and get some Papa Do. Yeah, no, we did. We do, and we actually I was inboxing him. You know oh, what I'm saying? Like man. so, you know, it might it might be a collab, you know, between us and, and him. That would be dope. But uh but yeah, man, what we got next? Let's see. Next up here we got the <laughs> now that my my wife uh watches The Bachelor, you know what I'm saying? I watched it a couple times with her, I can't lie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, you didn't clown me for watching the notebook. I so. didn't, but I mean, that, I watched it too, that's though. That's another story for yeah, you. Like, but my just, reason is different from yours. I just wasn't expecting that you I would tell. I want, so, you know what? We're going to start a segment where I have my ratchet story that I tell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but yeah, and I, and I, it's a ratchet story around me watching the notebook. Oh, it is? Okay. I, yeah. I, it, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to start a segment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where we do that. But well, that might have to be a Facebook live or something. Yeah, we might, yeah, we might have to go live. Yeah, we might have to go live and, and just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like ratchet stories. That'd be interesting. Uh, oh, you know, I, oh, you know, they'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So but, uh, it's uh, Chris, so, yeah. Chris Harrison. Harrison. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are on The Bachelor, you know. And was it, did, was it just The Bachelor or did he do The Bachelorette also? That's a good question. Um, I just, the story, it was talking about The Bachelor, so. Okay. Um, I don't remember him, honestly, because my, uh, actually, now that you said it, my wife, she watches The Bachelorette. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a, it's a, uh, Ancho does that, uh, the host of. Uh, the main watcher. Ancho. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, with, with Marcel Marcel well. Well. yeah, with Marcel as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually, he's the newest host of it now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. But uh, Chris Harris, he exited the Bachelor franchise after, after twenty years. After, yeah, twenty years after uh, defending former contestants' racist, racist behavior, and this is kind of you know I've called, you know anytime with stuff like this, you kind of want to see what was actually said, mm -hmm. um, you know. And, but he was you know like I said, it's been twenty years, and so reading his statement from Chris Harrison, like he ain't he ain't really mad. He just like. Right. End of a story. Now, yeah. the thing that he actually said, I think he was talking talking to Rachel Lindsay, a black woman, mind you, mm -hmm. on an interview, and it was extra. I think she's on extra, and um, he says Harrison expressed sympathy for um, Kurt Con Connell, which was I, I guess a past contestant on The Bachelor. And, um, he was defending their behavior. Or yeah, and she would, cause she went, she attended what they call, what is it called, a um, a plantation theme fraternity mm -hmm. formal in 2018. Uh, uh, what they call the antebellum mm -hmm. plantation theme, you know, fraternity. Wow. And so that was doing a lot of criticism on for her and and uh, Rachel Lindsay, the black woman, asked him on a, a extra interview, you know, kind of what he thought about it and stuff. And, um, you know, he basically, this is what he said. He was like, well, Rachel, you know, is it is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? Because there is a big difference. Basically talking about the, the appearance of racism of actually attending, you know, something like that. You know, and then Lindsay, the black interviewer, she said it's not a good look ever. You know, in her response, if I went to that party, what would I represent at that party? And so basically, what it sounds like to me from what they put out there, like he was basically um, kind of downplaying or saying, because of the times that we're in, that's why it was such a big deal. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Which, honestly, just from the context of from what I see and what I saw, I was like, you know, then he came back and apologized and said he admitted he made a mistake, you know, after he went through the interview or whatever and stuff like that. So... Honestly, I don't. It doesn't look seem to me as to be that egregious, you know what I'm saying? But you know, he was just kind of in his bag, and so you know, he said what he said, and you know what I'm saying? Like, just like with you know the times that we live in, like we were talking. I think off camera, like Project Pat. If Project Pat came out with uh, Gorilla Pimp, Co Gorilla Pimp or Giddy Green, that album in 2020 or 2021. You know what I'm saying? The Me Too would be kind of, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and that's our boy, you know, Project yeah, Pat. No, we love Pat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and even now with all of these woke women and, you know, Me Too yep. and all of that, like, we, we, like, cause look, 
I be out more than you do. For sure, you do. When Gorilla Pimp come on, yeah. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your boss get involved, I'm yeah. play it all. But like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna slap his ass and like they they right they they, they right there with him. Yeah. That's a classic pass. You know what I'm saying? That's like classic. they they they're they are right there with him. Yeah. I'ma call your mama up. Bitch, that's a no no like <laughs> men with like you look around, everybody is That's a no no. You know what I'm saying? They they're on it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? With, with all of this stuff, like, but when it come on, no matter how woke a woman is, and no matter how I'm the queen mm -hmm. and fix your crown queen, they forget when it. my nigga come on, they forget when, it. Juvenile, when Juvenile says that Cash Money Records is taking over for the 99 nine, nine, 2000 nine. to your head, like, when he say, girl, you're working with some man, like, they instantly, everybody, <laughs> they, you know what I'm saying, getting it in. Getting the position. Every variation of twerking that you can think of. Yeah. And I'm gonna come up with names for all of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But every variation of twerking, you get that they do that. Mm -hmm. I said that to say we're we're sensitive about certain things. Mm -hmm. But how far does it go? Right. Because like let's say for example, let's let's just be real. Like Halloween. Yeah. We we dress up. People dress up like Harley Quinn and the Joker. Mm -hmm. But that relationship is the essence of what people would consider toxic. Facts. Is yeah. that a good look? That's like the most abusive relationship. Like it's them yeah. and Ike and Tina. Like that's yeah. If, if somebody wins, it's Ike and Tina. Yeah. The essence of toxicity. Yeah. The, somebody dressing up like a uh, Leatherface. Has anyone seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> like it's a straight up rape scene in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this yeah. man was killing people and wearing their skin. Yeah. That like where does it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, scream! Like, we celebrating serial killers too. Like, we're like, so if we're gonna be all the way, like, we can go all the way. Right. Granted, I wouldn't go to an antebellum theme party. That's just me, right, though. Right. Right. But, but, like, you but said, if I, that's what you want to do, and I, I think this, I people, think I would know some black people that would go. Yeah. I think you do too. But, like, but, there would just but be. I'm just like people do dumb shit all the time. Right. Like, just look back at your life. Right. Like, we ain't got to go way far back. No, we don't. Just go back the last 10 years, yeah. the last 15 years. Less you, than that. You yeah. probably got some dumb... Yeah. And like, then, another yeah. ratchet story for another day. Like, me doing dumb shit, like, caused me to die for however long I was out. Yeah. I woke up in the hospital. Yeah. July 30, 2011. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In, in hindsight, at the time, I thought it was a good idea. Right. In hindsight, that was the definition of... Another award. We got the dumb shit award. Like yeah. that was the that was it. the dumb shit award, yeah. and, and we can call that the Roche Raglan dumb shit award. <laughs> like that, <laughs> it, I, like facts. Right. But I think we're in an era now where, uh, and I saw a clip of this show called The Good Fight. It's a, it's a show, a law show. It comes on, I guess, the Paramount Network. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that play in it, you've seen them in different TV shows and movies. But one of the guys was talking about. He said, man, he said, you can't make a joke in, in 2021. He said, man, everybody, everybody, he said, you offend everybody for everything. It ain't no way you can tell the joke. And so, like, it was different clips where people was trying to give me, just like, man, I can't say, tell no joke about white women clothes. Like, like it was just everything. It was like, but, the, but, but when he was saying, that's what stood out to me. He was like, you can't make a joke about anything because everybody's so sensitive. And this is the crazy thing. A lot of times we're getting offended for other people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That is true. Like, like most of the time, these people defending these groups and these other people are not the group. Mm -hmm. It's other people. Oh, I'm offended for them. Like, no, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like with the, uh, well, you know, the red skin name. You know, I think a lot of people, I know I've talked to uh, people, you know, that were a part of the group before. And they said they never, you know, they don't have a problem with the red skin name and stuff. But then... I think a lot of black people, you know, speak on it like if if, if a team was called nigga, you know, I would have an issue with it. Okay, but we would have so, had an issue with it in right. 1975, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? If it, if it was a team called the Nashville Niggas, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, then, and then the mascot was like a raccoon. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would have had a problem with it then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that, that was a name, like, yeah. You know, like like and I agree again I, I have to go do some research, but yeah. I don't recall Native Americans having a history of citation. 
when I say citation, I mean you have literal documentation where they saying like we filed a protest, we filed a motion for complaint. You know what I'm saying? It might have been some water cooler complaints. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, and, and again, and we we don't know. Like in some cases, things were meant to honor. Right. You know, other names and things like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't it wasn't meant as a an insult. It was meant to honor that. But that goes back to something that we said uh, a few podcasts ago. Like we got to learn the difference between when we actually are disrespected, when somebody is disrespecting us versus me feeling disrespected. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like like if if you're actually trying to disrespect me, that's a difference than me just feeling disrespected. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, sure. you got on the Memphis Tigers hat. I, I love the Tigers, but like, if 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 when the 49ers lost, you know what I'm saying? And and, and you you got a Kansas City Chiefs hat to match your shirt and your right. shoes. You got on some red and gold shoes and a shirt, and you got a Chiefs hat to match. It's like, oh, you trying to mock me? You, not you. <laughs> you right. just like the Chiefs hat. Right. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this chick went to a, probably a party. Somebody said it's a party. This the theme. She dressed. Now again, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not defending her because I don't know. Right. But again, being somebody who's been falsely accused of something, I don't like to fa- to accuse nobody until I know all the information. Black, white, purple, green, blue, male, female, transgender, right. whoever. I need to know all the information. It's a lot of so, stuff because if you, you know, you go into a, a theme party as like. And a band, like I said, it, it, it is a little bit extreme. You, I wouldn't necessarily go to it, but I can see how somebody could go to it and you know convince themselves, oh, it was cool. I like, you know, maybe they like the fashion from back mm-hmm. then, or you know, kind of whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of excuses, but you know, whatever, whatever with that. You know what I'm saying? Chris Harris is out. People that actually watch The Bachelor, you know. Um, you're not gonna see Chris Harrison. Anymore. Sucks for you, I guess. But like I said, I'm sure they're gonna get somebody else. In the words of the Von Trapp family singer, "So long, farewell." <laughs> we hate to say goodbye. Peace. Now, my nigga. The next here? is uh, this is actually a good uh, topic with the NBA here. Uh, Terry Stotts, the now former coach of the Portland Trail Blazers, he was fired, um, and this is you know. It's really kind of to no surprise they lost in the first round the last couple of times. But honestly, I don't even put the um, the blame on him. You right. know, as like really as a GM. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, was he the GM though? No, he was. He was just a coach. He didn't yeah, have so any. He's not. He didn't yeah. have roster control. He like. didn't have any type of control when it comes to the roster and the roster. Dame and McCollum is cool. McCollum to me is a is an elite third option on a championship team, but he's right. not what you would call, you know what I'm saying, your second option. Like, they were just the same size, you know, smaller backcourt. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, they, you know what I'm saying, they pretty much got him fired because they never built a roster that was good enough to actually really try to compete. Like, Dame will have all these heroics, 12 threes in a playoff game, you know what I'm saying, very clutch player, but it's like, you only gonna go so far because you're not gonna beat, you know what I'm saying, a team, you know, in the best of seven series like that. You know what I'm saying? If it was an NC tournament, NCA tournament format, you know, him and McCullum would have a better shot. But the way the playoffs set up, you not you not gonna win. You're not gonna win the way that's set up. Like you may win a game or two off those heroics, but you at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, they slick kinda got their head coach for all the GM got the, got they got them got them fired so okay so the last time when 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 the Trailblazers won the championship and I'm looking it up which is why I look 77 well, I'm right yep, yep so you had yeah. one of the best at the time this is pre injuries before he decided to become a vegetarian for some Bill. strange reason mm-hmm. Bill Walton I'm not knocking vegetarians but if you're playing a contact sport it's certain things that hold on hold on I mean, I, maybe I didn't know that he, he went he went, he went vegetarian That's when, and then that was when he After, started having all them injuries where yep I don't yep. think I knew that. And it's a couple of other players that have done it. And then, like, I want to say Grant Hill did it. That's when he started having all the ankle injuries, and then he changed his diet back. I didn't know that. Yep. So he was wow. an all-NBA. Mm. Like, I want to say I think he was an MVP that year. 
Bill Walsh in that center, and he was like he was like the defense. He he won. Uh, I don't know if he won Man. defensive player of the year, that, but he had won defensive player of the year. He won the MVP before. that year. Right? Yeah, he, I think he was the MVP that year. Yeah. But he was their center. They had Maurice Lucas, who I believe is in the Hall of Fame, who yep. was like one of the best rebounders in the league. They had Lionel Hollins, Lionel Hollins who was also an all-star. I met his Grizz, the old yeah, coach. Yeah, old coach of the Grizz. Yep. He was an all-star. He played point guard. He was a very good uh, defender. And so uh, a lot of their other guys, their role players, shooters, and stuff like that, but you had uh, a very defensive-minded guard. You had a very defensive-minded power forward, a very defensive-minded center. Mm-hmm. And then your role players, you know, your shooters and stuff like that. So they really only got one all NBA player, yeah. which is Dame. Uh, they have not made any roster moves to really support that roster because you have Dame and CJ who are offensive minded. Um, neither one sense. of them are very good defenders no, at all. Melo, although he provides some scoring, is not a defender. So uh, what is it, uh, Nurkic? Nurkic, but he's not good. a defender. He's not a defender. Like he's a great offensive so, player. This is what I'm saying. Didn't they get Cantor back? Yep, they got. He's coming back. off the bench now. Rodney Covington, my boy from Tennessee State. Right. He's the only really defensive yeah, guy. But that's what I'm saying. But you got. But he, you have what's the name? You have him coming off the bench. He's not a defender. Yeah. You know what and I'm saying? They acquired Powell. Norman Powell from Toronto. Right, right, right. He's somewhat of a defender. But, but I like Gary Trent Jr. better as a defender. Too. He, me he too. He had some dog on on defense. I did too. Um, so you don't have anybody to play defense. Yeah. So now if your shots aren't falling, you don't you're not stopping anybody. That's not the coach's fault. Every year consistently Every he has year. Portland at the like in the middle of the pack of the way. I mean, again, you're talking about Golden State when they was in their prime. They was still in the middle of the pack. You yeah. got the Lakers. They still right there. Utah came out of nowhere, and, you know, they got a high seed, but mm-hmm. Portland is still in the mix. You know, Denver came up, but Portland is still in the mix every mm-hmm. year. Yep. That's not Terry Stott's fault. And this is not me. You know, I hope right. a black coach gives a shot because we also was going to talk about Jason Kidd. Dame won Jason Kidd. Yep. And then it's controversial with that because now everybody want to bring up stuff from 20 years ago on Jay Kidd. Yeah, I saw that. Stuff that he already paid the penalty for. Yeah. Um, But... It's not Terry Stott's fault. Mm-hmm. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Fault. Like, because when he came, they wasn't a playoff team. Right. You know, it's like, oh, well, they got no. They had Dame. They had Dame with Aldridge. Yep. Yep. Before the Marcus got traded Before to San Antonio, yep. Terry Stotts came and turned him into a playoff team. Yep. You can say what you want. He's a good coach. I'm not gonna say he's a great coach, but he's a good coach. Mm-hmm. But you got one great player. Yep. And now the way the league is. You know, one guy can't do unless, like what Jimmy did uh, last year in the finals versus the Lakers, when he dropped. But he was defending too, though. Right. Dame ain't no defender. No. Dame can shut me down. Right. But that ain't hard though. Right. Like my basketball <laughs> career ended a long time ago. Right. It's not hard to shut me down. Right. But he not shutting like. Nah. No. You ain't even shutting Kimba down. Like Kimba been hurt. Yeah, he not even really. You know what I'm saying? Him. Like you. Yeah. you so you, you don't have any de- – and then they're not big guards either. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You got two six three guards who yeah. don't really defend. Yeah. So if you're playing, you know, your, the next team you're playing 6'4 and 6'7 or 6'4 and 6'6. Six, six. Right. And, and and to your point with that, the last series that they lost was uh, against Denver. And, of course, we know with Denver they got Nurkic I – mean, not Nurkic, but Jokic. Yeah, J- J- Joker, J- the Joker. The Joker. He, and who going to guard him? He won the MVP. And uh, you got Nurkic and got, Cantor. Got Neither Nurkic. one of them play defense. But the thing was, to your point, uh, two kind of no names as far as in the big uh, scheme of things. Uh, Monte Morris mm-hmm. for the Denver Nuggets and uh, Franzino Capazano or something. Two guards for Denver went off. You know what I'm saying? For a few games, 25, 25, 28 points. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it wasn't no defense. They had nobody on the perimeter. And these are not big names. These, right. This is not Just like... Just some dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some nice players. This ain't players. Will Barton. Exactly. You know he, what I'm he saying? Was like, injured, right, yeah. he was injured. This ain't Jamal Murray. He's right. been injured. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you just got some, and don't get me wrong, like some dudes in the in the NBA are better than some dudes from Mount Moriah. Oh, yeah, for you sure. You know, if you're from Memphis, sure. y'all know about Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah. Like, yeah. Some dudes from the NBA will kill any some dudes from Mount Moriah, but I'm just saying... For the sake of the NBA, these are just some dudes. Right. 
and they were going off for 25, you know, 30 points at a time on Dame and McCullum because basically you're trying to outscore people. So, you know, and, uh, and like you said, to your point, we're talking about now with Jason Kidd, uh, Dame came out publicly, said he wanted Jason Kidd to be the next coach. But, um, you know, but now they're trying to bring up some old allegations of his um, domestic, with, violence, domestic 20 violence 20 years ago. Yeah, uh, so now Jason Kidd has publicly come out and said that he has to, you know, retire his name from the search of being that actual coach now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not sure if you, if you saw that, but, you know, he actually had to come out and say that, you know, he doesn't want to be a part of that now because he didn't want, you know, if he did get the job, he'd be like, oh, okay, it's an inside job because, you know, Dame is from Oakland, like right, where Jason Jay Kidd is from. from. And so now they're tampering and, you know, right. all this stuff. And so, but honestly, I think, you know, J. Kidd, on the other hand, too. Slick might want to be waiting around for the Lakers. Yeah, he don't, he don't want Portland. Like, yeah. you know, unless you're going to give him a GM job. Yeah, too. I want to say he's either going to, well, Kirk going to be a go to stay for But if Kirk ever leave Golden State, oh, yeah, like J. Yeah, Kidd yeah. is probably going to either stay in L.A. Yeah, or go to Golden State. I can see that. I can see that. And so here, let's go uh, to these. Uh, Quickies now. Now the first quickie I think you got here with do uh, Doctor, our boy, the first ever whatever nigga award. Yes, uh, the, the initial recipient of the whatever nigga award. He, and, and and we're gonna we're gonna hold our our, our glasses up uh -huh. like piggy's driver and go ahead. You know what I'm saying? And take a sip. Mm hmm. Mm. To the whatever nigga award yeah, initial recipient, the Doctor Falk dog. Yeah. He. Uh, uh, now what was it with Falk the Delta? Feasy. The, the, Delta? the Delta strain mm -hmm. of the coronavirus or the Delta coronavirus, it, it originated in India. Mm. And he said that it could take over the U.S. if we don't use up these vaccinations that are about to expire. <laughs> so now you want us to, use, and again, I'm not, I'm not against taking the shot if that's what you want to do. Right. Okay. Right. If that's what you want to do, if that's what you feel compelled to let do, do that. But my thing is, it's like, we don't even drink expired milk. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, I mean, like, I know people who would throw a whole loaf on of the, bread away. On the day one, before. Yeah, if, if one bread in the front, I said one bread, if one slice of <laughs> right. the loaf, got, got it got to be on it. They'll throw the whole thing away. Like, me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm check. I'm, wait, uh, 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 for a piece, I'm straight. I'm taking it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, a I'm little penicillin ain't never hurt right. nobody. Take, take um, bread, yeah. yeah, and if y'all didn't know, that's you know mold. That's actually how they discovered you know penicillin from mold. So, mm -hmm. um, but no, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't understand, and I know this is quick, so I ain't gonna go on no tangent. But again, like, I'm not taking no expired shot. I'm not taking one that's close to expiring. You know, like, like sometimes, like I have, but I don't even want to take a Tylenol, even though I know the medicine technically, like a Tylenol, don't go bad. They just can't sell it after the date. But like. Your Tylenol can be expired for two or three years. It's just going to take a little longer for it to work. But, like, it'll still do what it's supposed to do. And if y'all don't know, if y'all ain't never seen The Wolf of Wall Street, remember when he was mm -hmm. like, oh, the Quaaludes wasn't working, so he took too many. Yeah. And then when they hit, yeah. it was like, like, he didn't even remember how he got home. Like, so if you take some old medicine, like, don't overdo it. Just, like, you just got to give it a little bit longer. Yeah, so that's, you know, that that that's interesting. But, uh, you know, whatever, nigga, with, you know, Dr. Fauci, you know, let let them do what they do, but just you know, just keep your eyes peeled, y'all. Keep your eyes open. Keep your head on a swivel. Okay, this next quickie here is uh, <laughs> Balas. <laughs> say it with me, man. Balenciaga. Balenciaga, and uh, Crocs collab. You yeah. know, I'm gonna put the picture up down. You're gonna have to put the picture up. And remember, when you put the when you put the quickies up, you know, you got to make sure you have our boy down there. Uh, I'm talking about yeah, you gotta have a Rick, man. You gotta have a Rick. You got to have a Rick. Yeah, got to put up my boy up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm one of these episodes. Uh -huh. where I'm gonna wait till it get cool again, but I got to break out the Simply Ravishing jacket. Oh, you got the, you got oh the, yeah, you know I got the Simply Ravishing joint. Like I got a couple of pictures on the uh -huh. brand where I got the Simply Ravishing. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know Rick Rude. That. that was like that, he in my top five. Wow. Yeah, Rick Rude was Rick Rude was that guy. I like them too. I like them too. Uh, but but yeah, so like Balenciaga and Crocs have teamed up to make some stiletto. Crocs, and so when I put the picture down there, you probably looking at it now. It's it's it will be interesting, but if y'all don't don't front acting like we ain't about to buy. Some people that we know are gonna buy these giants and gonna be at the pool on poolside. You know what I'm saying? 
are kicking in, or, uh, you know, because they that's comfortable. You know, maybe some of your aunties probably wearing them jeans. Let me tell you something, nigga. <laughs> niggas is gonna be niggas. <laughs> niggas is gonna. You, you, you're gonna have a, a chick out there with a bonnet on. Yep. She's gonna have on some Balenciaga <laughs> Crocs. That's fact. Everybody wanna be a nigga, but nobody wanna be a nigga. Nobody wanna be it. Yeah, you know, I gotta, whenever whenever we have a nigga moment, you know, like, we, it's we, power gotta have, yeah, we gotta get the power moment. We paying homage, yeah. Man, rest in peace to one of the legends. But yeah, like, like, and, and you know what? And I said this off camera, like, those Balenciaga Crocs, bonnets all the time, yeah. uh, that's like wearing your grandma's drawers. Yeah. Like, like in an emergency situation, like in a dire situation, like life or death situation, you might sometimes have to do it yeah. you don't want to tell nobody but you you had to do it yeah. and i just use that example like it's some extreme that you you know it's not reasonable but you do it but if you keep doing it yeah you got a serious problem like if you go to kroger you got to make a run 6 a.m 7 a.m in the morning or something and you you know you got that kind of comfortable you want to you know do that you're not supposed to put no heel <laughs> on no crop nah, that's a that, cool. that shoe is ugly anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ugly. And you're gonna put a heel on it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it's a obviously it's a real thing. So you know, we'll see. You know, some of you, if we see you out there with them, you know what I'm saying? I, I I'm, I'm gonna take a picture. I'm gonna take a picture and um, just say I told you so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, this next quickie here with uh, Clarence Williams. Uh, the third, he passed. Man, rest in peace to one of the legends. And if you do not know, you gotta know who you, Clarence you know Williams him, the third I'll is. put this picture up. No, man. I would say it like everybody seen Tales from the Hood. The best scene in Tales from the Hood, he was the dude that owned the funeral parlor in Tales from the Hood. Yeah. He was in Sugar Hill as a uh, Wesley Snipes and my guy from uh, Five Heartbeats. Yeah. He was their dad in in Sugar Hill. He was Prince's dad, I think, in Purple, Purple Rain. Rain. American was, Gangster. Uh, yeah, he was in American Gangster. He played his bumpy, and he also was in Hoodlum uh, with Lawrence Fishburne. Like he was the guy that was working for Dutch Schultz in Hoodlum. Half he was baked, a half baked, half baked dude. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What he yeah. said? What was his name? Was it Sam? It wasn't Sam, I don't man. Remember his name? Uh, remember Samson. Mister Samson. Cause they yeah, called Dave Chappelle. Know. He was like, "Oh, Sheila, <laughs> <laughs> this is Sheila, Mama Fell." He was yeah. like, "Shut up, bitch!" <laughs> like, but no, like in Tales from the Hood. Yeah. When he was like, "Hey, man." Oh man, where's the where's the shit? He's like, ah yes, the Yo. shit. I will get you your yeah. shit. And then he slapped. Quit messing with me, old man. That's crazy. He was like, whoa. <laughs> that's the first movie I thought yeah, about when I, when I like, thought about him. Honestly, man. And, and then for the old school people who watched the pod, he was also uh, being in like the late '60s, early '70s with yep. Mod Squad. Yep. They remade the movie like in the '90s with Omar Epps, who played his character from mm -hmm. the late '60s, early '70s. But he was Link, and it was big because it wasn't a lot of black actors on TV at the time. Yeah. But he played Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Hayes in the Mod Squad, and that was like his big, big yeah. break. And uh, man, dude, you know his his career span a long time. Cause six decades. Yeah, because he was uh, 81 when he Yeah, passed. like, so he, he, he acted and stuff in the 60s, yep. in the 70s, in yep. the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s. Dude was in six different decades. Right. So, you right. know what I'm saying? And he acted with, with some of your favorites. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like he was a phenomenal actor. Uh, I mean, more, more than notable for playing a lot of shady characters and stuff, but he right. kind of had that malevolent type of voice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, like, man, I, he, I love Clarence. He had the career, look, man. man. So, but like, people, if I, when I put this picture up, you are gonna know who you, he you is. Gonna, you gonna know who he is because you've you, seen Sugar Hill, right. you've seen Tales from the Hood, yep, you've seen Gangster. American Gangster, you've seen Hood, Purple Rain, you've seen Purple Rain, Most you've seen Half Baked. You y'all have seen one of these movies, and when you see his face, you're gonna know him. Right. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? and even the game like sampled that part from a. Uh, Tales from the Hood on one of his songs, like, cause the name of the song was called The Shit, but it was mm. that, that scene from Tales from the Hood. Ah, oh, It was okay. like, the it's, shit. It's like, it was just, yeah. But, uh, and, and, and it was funny, cause you know, you know how my pops was, they didn't let us watch a lot of radar movies, but we watched it, like, it was just like, they, they, they had to laugh at the scene. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, cause it was funny, and they was like, oh, we don't talk like that, but, yeah, that man, rest in peace to one of the legends, man. Yeah, rest in peace to him, man. Um, and of course, uh, with this another quickie, man, we were in these uh, NBA playoffs 
here. Second round. Everybody's we're, in the second round. We're officially into the uh, semifinals of the NBA playoffs. And as we speak right now, the Suns are playing the Nuggets, and they are up. The Suns are up 95-70 to 70 in the fourth quarter. Mm. And uh, so... Um, and uh, last, uh, the last game with uh, the Clippers played the Utah Jazz the other night, and Utah ended up winning. Like for me, I, I, I don't really think this series is gonna be too much, too much longer with the Suns and the Nuggets. I just don't think they. And Aiden, um, yeah. Aiden is is no, he can't. Jokic is better than him, but Aiden can kind of hold his own. Yeah. But see, this is the thing. Aiden is a defensive player. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he can put a you know what I'm deep. saying? He put a little and deep. so uh, the thing that they was about him was it wasn't the defense and rebounding they was going to have to worry about. It's like, is he going to be able to score? Yeah. You know, is his game going to trend? Because he got more of an old school type of game around the basket and stuff. And like, is he going to be able to be that new type of center? Yeah. But defensively, it was never an issue. Mm -hmm. And so now it's not only does Jokic have to try to figure out a way to score, but then he also got to try to figure out because see Phoenix in space, right. which means you can't if you try to double down, you ain't finna leave DB open. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bridges can shoot a little bit. You know, C CP can shoot. Right. You know they they got other guys. Crowder can knock down a jump shot. You know what I'm saying? And so I think Phoenix is well rounded. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it is gonna be between Phoenix and then whoever wins between the the Clippers and the Jazz. And honestly, I, I think the Clippers probably win that series to me with the with, and the Jazz. I think they're gonna end up getting them, and then I think you're gonna have Brooklyn is just tearing apart the Bucks mm -hmm. right now. Uh, Greek Freak got to show yeah, me they some. Yeah, they have 2-0. Greek Freak got to show me some. He has been um, less underwhelming. Plus, the Nets don't really play defense either. So that's my thing. Like you got to show out because it, it's that not like by 39. Yeah, the without Harden too. So. Right. Um, and then like and then like the Hawks and 76ers. I was telling you because I the was, Hawks won the first yeah, game. Yeah. But then you know what I'm saying. Um, the last now the last game was a little bit more of a blowout. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like it was one yeah. one eighteen to one hundred two. But it still was. But it still had their moments. They took that game. one at from the 76ers at home. The Hawks are for real, man. I, I had, I, well, you know what I'm saying? I don't hate so, to say yeah, it, that's, that's, yeah, they, that's amazing. But it's, it's, it's going to be interesting because the mm -hmm. Hawks. And they, shout out to Nate McMillan who came in too because they were a losing team. And yep. now they're in the semifinals of the playoffs. Yep. Nate McMillan. So, for sure. Salute on, to them on that. And so, uh, going to this last quickie here with Julio Jones to the Titans. And. What I want to say in this, it's it's a sexy story, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm, you know, fantasy wise too. I'm a fantasy football player. Uh, it probably has some implications with that. But actually on the field, I'm like maybe just because. Who you, do you think he would have been a better fit for? Like um, Green Bay. If uh if Rogers stayed or if he, if let's say if yeah, Rogers went if to Rogers Broncos had Devonte and Julio to throw to like they legit would be unstoppable because they're more of a throwing offense like right. the Titans are built off Henry mm -hmm. you know running so now are you are you gonna go more to passing now and kind of try to yeah. not run as much with him but that's your identity so it's like mm -hmm. you know Julio that's a sexy pick but are you gonna now? You know, have more pat. I mean, it ain't like you got Brett Favre back there, or you know, Rodgers back there. You got uh, what's it, Ryan Tannehill? Yeah. I he, mean, he's not a he's bad quarterback though. He's by any stretch of the imagination. Like could. I just don't know. Like you said, if he had to just throw the football all the time, I don't really know. You know, right? Would yeah. I would have. You know, not granted. I would have like. You know, who I would have wanted to see him come to. <laughs> but I, I don't. You know, like yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I should have. You know what I'm saying? Did. Yeah, I mean, because he went for a second round. Six, I'm like, two man. Two second rounds. I'm like, it like me, we could have gave up that. But again, yeah. like, I just don't know. I don't really know. While I'm excited to see what Trey Lance can do in the future, um, yeah. I don't. I don't really know. Who y'all number one? Jimmy. Jimmy G. No, number one uh, receiver. Oh. Hell, I don't know. Uh, I'm Debo thinking, and Ayuk. Uh, yeah, he, it's probably he Ayuk is probably number one Debo, and then uh, Jalen Jalen Hurd, not Hurts, Jalen Hurd, 
he used to be a running back Tennessee. for Tennessee and then yeah, he transferred yeah. to Baylor and okay. he switched to receiver. And he looked good every time he played a preseason, but then he's just been injury like every year. Right. He's gotten hurt that made him miss the season. Yeah. And so like he's a six four receiver, speed, yeah. you know, athleticism, but it's just like, you know, the best ability is availability. He can't stay stay healthy. If we had, if Hurd was healthy, and then like with Ayuk and Debo, because Debo can run out the backfield and stuff like that, and we got like guys like Richie James and all of them, yeah. Raheem Mostert. Um, but like I said, like Julio would be that the ex receiver, you know, like like right. they talk about Ocho being Ocho, the ex receiver. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, but like you said, I agree with Big Green Bay. Like I don't think Kansas City could have afforded him, but I think maybe yeah. with the Patriots, he would have been a guy. Like you know, I can't stand New England, but I thought that would have yeah. been a good fit. True. Uh, I mean, like, I legit think he would have worked in Oakland. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you sure. give Carr a for sure because, yeah. like, he was making the most out of the guys he had. Yeah. But, like, if you put Julio on that side, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, like, the thing with Denver is you got to have somebody to get him the ball. You know what I'm saying? But, like, mm -hmm. if you had put him out in L.A. with Matt Stafford, like, that would have been dangerous. You know, like, yeah. it, it was some other situations that I think would have worked better than yeah, Tennessee. But but I, I hope he, he, you know, for all my friends, that are, you know, our boy Jeremy, J-Mac, hit the like, Sanders. Right. He a tight I know he, he he tightening up right now. You know what I'm saying? Man. My brother Paco is, is tightening up right tight. now. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. And my boy Sam. Yeah, my homeboy, yeah, uh, yeah. when I told you about Glenn that's, uh, in the National Guard, Glenn Miller, he tightening up. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I know they happy and excited. So we we yeah. gonna see the, the, the NFL season's almost out. And also salute to my boy uh, Sam, man. He um, you know, he recently uh, lost his uh, mom, and mm -hmm. I know he watch our you know podcast and stuff too. And uh, that's uh, my homie. I'll tell me he uh, MPD officer. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. And uh, went to TSU with him and stuff. And so uh, you know, salute. Uh, you know, prayers and stuff, you know, definitely family, praying for you and, your and family, stuff. Bro. But I also know you're a Titan fan, so I saw you, you know, post some stuff about Julio and stuff. But like I said, it's a it's a wait and kind of see to me. I don't think it's uh it's as a big of a deal as people. It's a he a big name, but given that, you know, Derrick Henry is the face of that franchise, are you gonna try to take the ball out of his out of his hands more? To you know, but we know wide receivers got yeah. egos. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Always. So you know, but we'll see, man. So uh, alright, y'all. That's it for the run now, y'all. Keep it presidential.